Hello everyone, welcome to the Geo Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on various topics of geography, environment and research methodology on my channel, the Geo Ecologist. So if you are new to this channel, please consider subscribing our channel and also for the earlier content, you can go to the playlist section. Now in today's session on world regional geography, we are going to cover the South Asian realm or the South Asian region. But before we go ahead, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and also please share the videos with others as well. So now let's discuss about the South Asian realm that is basically comprising of these countries that you can see in the map right from Afghanistan, Pakistan, India, Nepal, Bhutan, Myanmar, Bangladesh and some islands that is Maldives and other Indian Ocean islands. So if you observe carefully this is also called a subcontinent area. It's as huge as a continent, but it is part of Asia. So it's subcontinent. So Indian subcontinent is the basic word that we refer to it in common language. Now, if you observe this particular realm or region is having a unique characteristics in many aspects. The first is the physiographic aspect. And one of the most important and prominent geographical feature that exists in this area is the Himalayan region that extends right from this particular point to almost this eastern margin. And this is one of the newest young fold mountain formation and part of many geographical theories inquiries and source of many glaciers and river studies especially in context to climate change in today's world that's very important then this is having the three side oceanic coverage if you observe an indian ocean divided or branched into arabian sea and bay of bengal very important for oceanic studies and also for the climatic studies related to monsoon so we also say this is monsoon asia Right, so monsoonal climatic dominated area are under the South Asian realm and most importantly in today's world, it's becoming one of the major centers for world business and also world politics is controlled or influenced largely by the Indian subcontinent if you observe carefully. So what you observe 4% of Earth's land area and almost 25% of people are inhabiting this particular area. That's why it becomes one of the very important areas across all realms that we have studied. So it's also the seat of many civilizations in the past if you observe carefully. So Indus Valley civilization or we say Harappan civilization Indus Saraswati Valley is what we talk about here in the Bronze Age category alongside the Egyptian Nile Valley civilization, Mesopotamian civilization and the Chinese civilization isn't it? And then adjoining the Gangetic Belt and other areas in India and across all those areas having the uniqueness in terms of culture and physiography. So if you observe carefully, this is the map of Indus Valley civilization. And what do you see here? This river valley Indus and its tributaries draining these areas between the Balochistan highlands and the th desert out here and the Aravallis. So area in the north Himalayan region, in the south oceanic area and in the west you have the highlands and in the east also you have desert as well as the Aravalli mountain. So area guarded by natural boundaries and obviously the fertile soils of Indus river basin. So you see the locational advantage of the civilization that flourished around 3000 BC and this is what we talk about the geographical perspective of these civilizations. So Harappa was the northern part, Mohanjodaro was the central part and Dholavira was the southern part if you observe carefully and it extends in present day almost till Haryana if you observe carefully. So this is the huge extent of the civilization which inhabited in this particular area alongside other Bronze civilizations in the world. Then let's go into the regional divisions of the South Asia. So first major regional division is the Western South Asia region if you observe carefully and which is in present day dominated by the Islamic dominated countries and it is mostly war ravaged and also looking into the Afghanistan, Pakistan, Balochistan and several other areas of this particular region. It has fertile soil as well as the desertic landscape amalgamated together. Then if you observe carefully is the 
इंडियन रीजन विच इज द हार्ट ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर साउथ एशियन रीजन हिस्टोरिक हार्ट और वी से रेल्स जॉइंट सो इंडिया इज द जॉइंट ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर रेल्म एंड इट गवर्नस और कंट्रोल द रीजनल इकोनॉमी इफ यू ऑब्जर्व एंड ऑल्सो इज द फ्लैग बेयर ऑफ द सिविलाइजेशन एंड द कल्चर ऑफ साउथ एशिया वेन वी से राइट एंड इनहेबिटेड अक्रॉस द गंगा वैली एंड ब्रह्मपुत्र वैली एंड नेक्स्ट इन दिस रेल्म इज बांग्लादेश ओब्वियसली इट्स वन ऑफ द मोस्ट डेंसली पॉपुलेटेड रीजन इन द वर्ल्ड एंड इट इज हैविंग अ यूनिक एंड इंपॉर्टेंट फिजियोग्राफी ऑफ डेल्टा रीजन दैट वी ऑब्जर्व ऑफ गंगा एंड ब्रह्मपुत्र रिवर्स देन इफ यू ऑब्जर्व इज द नदर्न माउंटेन स्टेट्स एंड दीज माउंटेन स्टेट्स इंक्लूड द किंगडम्स ऑफ नेपाल एंड भूटान एज वेल सो इफ यू ऑब्जर्व नेपाल एंड भूटान आर पार्ट ऑफ द हिमालयन स्टेट्स अलॉन्ग साइड इंडिया एंड दे हैव यूनिक कल्चरल हेरिटेज एज वेल नाउ इफ यू ऑब्जर्व द सदर्न आईलैंड पोर्शन डॉमिनेटेड बाई श्रीलंका मॉलदीव एंड सम मोर आईलैंड विच आर पार्ट ऑफ इंडियन टेरिटरी सो दिस इज द लार्जर पिक्चर ऑफ द साउथ एशियन रीजन नाउ लेट्स ऑब्जर्व केयरफुली थ्रू मैप्स एंड ऑल्सो थ्रू जियोलॉजी एंड जियोमोर्फोलॉजी एंड अदर जोग्राफीज सो टेक्टोनिक इवोल्यूशन ऑफ साउथ एशिया इफ यू ऑब्जर्व केयरफुली दिस इज हाउ द इंडियन प्लेट during gondwana separation started to move towards this side and eurasian plate was moving towards this particular side so collision led to this particular himalayan region formation and here is india which is here today since 10 million years ago and the movement started around 70 or 65 million years ago by the end of cretaceous that we have talked about time and again in geological time scale as well so what you observe this is giving the region a unique physiography this plate tectonic associated physiography is the key to geomorphology and geography of the region right now if you observe carefully in the map so coming from the northern part if you observe this is the taklamakan desert in the northern part kunlun mountains in tajikistan you have this pamir not this portion here and then you have turkmenistan here and down south starts from afghanistan now if you observe afghanistan carefully it shares the boundary with kashmir into a particular region that is near hunza valley and here is karakoram range the top set where k2 is the highest peak going towards the west you have paropa mrs range out here near herat and these are the afghanistan highlands in the north afghanistan is bifurcated by this amu darya river from its neighboring country here is the hindu kush kabul is the capital if you observe carefully and here is the kandhar and this area is the afghanistan highlands and plateau region desertic conditions exist out here then you have the passes called khyber pass bolan pass suleiman range kirthar range so if you observe carefully this particular area it has lot of important physical features so right from the pamir nords to karakoram range dard community and balti community there this stan region in the himalayan region here north and then you have these important passes like khyber pass gumal pass bolan pass and then several ranges that you observe and then crossing this is the major indus valley you have jhelum chinab ravi satluj right and then further comes the indian desertic condition of thar and then we have the indo gangetic plain then if you observe carefully one important thing to look upon is the map of india and it's adjoining in the north so if you observe this area wakhan corridor that we say carefully this is afghanistan and indian border as we know and this green area if you carefully observe is the pok region and many times it's also referred to as azad kashmir by many foreign nationals so this is the occupied region but we as indians claim it our own then further if you observe this particular portion of this region is the territory ceded by pakistan to china in 1963 that is shakjam valley and then here is the aksai chin glacier this portion and india has the highest front here in the aksai chin region then you observe the red is this part of aksai chin which is now under the control of china and this boundary is called lac line of actual control and this boundary is called loc and then you have the indian administered kashmir jnk and ladakh this is the present situation but we still in our maps in our official map we declare this whole as part of india that is very important to consider now let's go ahead and understand the physiography of this monsoon asia so if you observe the normal wind direction is 
in this particular direction that is from northeast to southwest but it reverses during monsoon season and the entire indian subcontinent is drained by the monsoon in for three months right from june to almost september and also some portions are affected in the down south by retreat of monsoon that we have discussed in climatology as well now further what is important is the two major countries pakistan and afghanistan that we talked about that lies here and it has this particular area which is the very fertile area and most of the population as well as the cropping area or the cropland is situated across the Indus and its tributary and major cities also are located out here if you observe carefully right and main opium poppy growing areas are in the red dots which is one of the major economic stays of Afghanistan if you observe here right and also related to the world drug trade as well that we say then further if you observe one of the very interesting feature that has happened in recent times is this corridor which is economic corridor between China and Pakistan so we say China Pakistan economic corridor is yet one of the ambitious projects mega project international project of China which has been in execution since 2006 so if you observe the road from Kashgar which is basically a region in the Uyghur province that is Uyghur autonomous region in this province that you observed taken over by China and through Gilgit Baltistan region there is entire connectivity to Karachi and Gwadar port. So this is something which is the ambitious project done by China and Chinese took this over in 2013 for the port development investment of about 46 billion dollars have been already made and a lot of important activities are happening here. Now if you observe carefully the population geography and settlement in this particular region you'll observe that Indus Valley and the Gangetic Brahmaputra Valley is the most densely populated areas of the world that you carefully observe and and due to physiography, other areas are little sparsely populated, having mountainous condition or desertic condition. Rest of them is full with people. And we know that according to demographic transition theory or model, we observe that there is a huge population explosion and still we are about in stage 3 and India is soon going to take over the world population as highest populated country, defeating China. So that's what is happening. Now observe the India which is the main dominating country in this particular region so our India is having 28 states and 8 union territories so 36 entities this is the map of India from the Ladakh Jammu and Kashmir to Kerala Tamil Nadu and these islands of Andaman Nicobar and Lakshadweep. now further if you observe the physiographic map of India right from these higher Himalayas greater Himalayas to the coastal plains we have a trajectory that is running out here if you observe so Himalaya greater plains highlands plateau regions Western coastal plain, eastern coastal plain and islands. This is the major physiographic division of India and if you want to look into the details of some of the important features you can observe from north to south. Here is the Pamir's sequence if you observe Karakoram, Ladakh range, Zanskar, Pir Panjal, then you have the Shivaliks, this is in the northwestern Himalaya and then here you have in the northeastern side Namcha Barwa, Mishmi Hills, then you have Naga Hills, and Garo Khasi Jaintia out here and then in between India you have the Aravali range and then you have Vindhyan, Satpuran range, Shahyadri range, Western Ghats here, Eastern Coastal Plain which is broken. Then if you observe carefully is this particular Deccan region, Deccan Plateau region. The tertiary and quaternary lava flows that settled here have resulted into this particular Plateau out here and if you observe carefully the features on this Plateau, so this is Malwa region, in the north is Bundel Khand, here is Aravali region region part of it then you have Satpuras, Satmala range here, Satmala hills, Balghat region, Telangana plateau then you have Western Ghats part of it, Eastern Ghats here you have Annamalai, Nilgiris, Cardamom hills this is called Malabar coast Koromandal coast then in Odisha coast you have Mahindragiri and then you have these eastern ghats out here and the extension goes up further with Chota Nagpur plateau region and if you want to look into the details of the hills that exist so observe here right from the Rajmal hills to Sonpur hills to Ramgarh to Odisha to Garjat hills Nagar hills then you have Nadan Sarkars, Nallamala, Venukonda, Palakonda, Nagari hills then you have Javadi, Chevroy, Panchamalai hills then you have Surumalai, 
Palni Hills, Vrishunath Hills, this is on the eastern portion. And if you go in the central, you have Vindian Scarp Lands, Kaimur Hills, Kaimur Plateau, then you have Mahadev, Ajanta, Balghat, and this is the Vindhyas and Satpuras that we observe out here. Apart from Aravali, Mount Abu is a very famous area where Aravalis have the highest peak called Guru Shikhar. And then if you observe here, coming down south, the Harishchandra part of Balaghat range here, Satmala is in the north, Seshalam Hills, and then you have Nilgiris. Doda Beta is the highest peak, then you have Anamalai, Anaimudi is the highest peak and Cardamom Hills out here. So this is East and West Hills of Peninsular India. Then further, the languages of South Asia if you observe. So mostly you will find this color Indo-European, Indo-Aryan family is dominating the region right from Balochi, Punjabi, Sindhi, Rajasthani, Hindi, Odia, Marathi and then several languages. Then you have the Dravid family here in the peninsula down south out here. So you have Telugu, Kannad, Tamil, Malayalam, right? And then you have a little of these islands and manis, right? And then further, what you observe is the Austric Asiatic families also in certain hilly regions like Khasi, Santhali, Munda and other tribal areas. So this is largely observable in this particular region in terms of language. Then if you observe the country-wise analysis. So let's look into this particular country called Nepal. So in Nepal, as we know that this area is also part of the mountain states and you have the Mahabharata range passing throughout here and then you have the Annapurna, Mount Everest being the highest peak in the world that is situated in Nepal. Then further if you observe some of the rivers of Nepal, so if you go from west you have the Mahakali, this area, then Sarda, Saryu and it Ghagra river, then it falls here and goes to join Ganga river then if you observe this is the Kali Gandhi and then Narayani which becomes Gandak out here joins Ganga then further the Sun Koshi and Sapta Koshi it becomes in India and then you have the Arun river now these rivers are originating from Himalayan region and draining the northern Indian plains that you observe carefully then further if you observe the next country in line is Bhutan so Bhutan is a very small country and famous for the happiness index that we studied in the earlier lectures as well a very important thing about Bhutan is that it is a very ecological friendly country Thimpu that is the capital out here and it is connected to India through this particular fun shoaling if you observe from here you can go right so this this is something important then you have Sankosh river and then you have the Mangli river project that is joining the Brahmaputra and this is a very small landlocked country then further if you observe the next country out here in this region is Bangladesh and Bangladesh is having very high population density as we know and major river here is Brahmaputra and Ganga river that comes out here and then some branches like Madhumati and Ganga is called Padma in Bangladesh and also remember Brahmaputra is called Jamuna in Bangladesh right and then you have the Ganga Brahmaputra Delta region out here now let's look into the Sri Lanka and Sri Lankan region is news because of economic crisis so if you observe the Adams Bridge out here the Gulf of Mannar Park Strait and this is Jaffna Jaffna Peninsula that we say coming towards south if you observe carefully Sri Lanka's center is the Adams Peak and it has a radial centrifugal drainage pattern if you observe carefully so all the rivers originate in the Sri Lankan high islands out here then you observe this coast here is the Colombo and Sri Lanka is famous for tea and the rivers of Sri Lanka if you observe Kala river, Yan river, then you have the Kalu river system, the Kirindi river system, all these rivers if you observe carefully are originating from highlands as we know right. Now let's look into the island territories. So here is Maldives down south in the Indian Ocean and it is the collection of atolls, right? The coral reefs atolls. So, so many atolls are here from north to south. If you observe, you can pause the video and you can learn the names of so many atolls and Malay is the capital, the largest, biggest atoll out here. And this is also called Lakadev Sea and it is nearby equator. So, this is in the equatorial region if we observe carefully. And then the Indian islands, right? Andaman and Nicobar Islands. So, from North Andaman, Middle Andaman, South Andaman, capital is Port Blair, then you have Little Andaman separated by 10 degrees, it's called 10 degree channel, then you have Kar Nicobar, then you have the other parts of islands which are part of Nicobar Islands till Great Nicobar, Little Nicobar, right? And the southernmost point is called Indira Point that we know. So here is the Andaman Sea and this is Andaman Islands as we know, part of the Bay of Bengal of Indian Ocean and there is one more set of coral reef islands which is here 
in the Lakshadweep region and if you observe this is also having a lot of small and big islands so Minikoi, Kalpini, Kavarti which is the capital so these are famous for tourism in this sector. So now when we have discussed the various aspects of the geographic realm of South Asia in these sessions to come we'll be talking more on other geographic realms so stay tuned stay safe keep watching and learning keep subscribed and also please do share the videos with others as well.